God is good. All the time. And all the time? God is good. Hallelujah. Are you dry? What to do when you're dry? Go to John. Uh, we're going to go to 1124. Excuse me. 1224. I came across that sermon jam yesterday. I was asking the Lord, Father, I feel dry. I mean, I feel, quote unquote, feel dry. Um, and, uh, and the answer is, I'm not. I mean, and uh, I said, Lord, well, I, I, I'll do worship and I'll just we'll, we'll just spend time in prayer and he gave me the words are you dry and what do you do when you're dry what was funny was everything brother Ravenhill said was everything in this message before I even saw it I was like what you read the same notes? John 12, 24. I assure you. Okay, let's back up to verse 23. Jesus replied to them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now, the funny word glorified, the word glorified comes from the Hebrew word kavod, which means heaviness, weightiness. Fifth commandment. Honor your father and mother. Glorify your father and your mother. Wait a minute. Why? They're the people. You glory God only. Sounds almost idolatrous. Mm -hmm. Here's what it is. Your father and mother are like God to you. That's why you glorify them. They are a picture. Heaviness and weightiness. Where have you disobeyed your mom? Or if you disobeyed your dad, you took their words lightly. You took their name upon your lips falsely. And you know what? You need to repent. You need to apologize for what you've done. That was of the Lord. I didn't uh, plan on saying that. Um, so, we children, even adults, must glorify our parents to the point where. If Jesus' command supersedes the parents, that's a different story. Where he tells us to get up and go, you better go. Okay? So, he says, now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So he just raised Lazarus from the dead. <coughs> no more miracles, other than a voice came down from heaven right afterwards. Here's where the glory comes. So if you feel dry, well, let me define what's wet or fruitful or bountiful. You'll hear this in, in spiritual terms. I feel spiritually dry or spiritually empty or I feel like nothing's happening. Well, one sows, one reaps, one waters, but God is the one who gives the growth. So when you're dry, you feel like, God, I feel like nothing's happening. I get up, I go to work, I do the same thing day in, day out. There's no miracles, no new revelation, nothing. I'm just walking and moving. Same dirty diaper, same snotty nose. Same Bible passage, same piece of sighting that I've seen for the past week. We have a dear brother with sighting, so I, I use him as an illustration, I'm sorry. <laughs> same block of wood that I'm cutting, same people I'm working with. What's the deal, God? He wants your death. I'm not talking physical death. All throughout the scripture. We so focus on physical things. 
Let me do this right and God will accept me. Bull stink. Done. It's over because Jesus says it's finished. The physical act that was required for your pleasing is his death on the cross. If God says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, Colossians 3, 3, your life is hid with Christ and God. Do you realize he says that over you? You are my son in whom I'm well pleased. You can't earn it. You can't work at it. Stop trying. What is required of you is re was required of Jesus. The greatest battle in all of history it was not at the cross. That was very important. It was Gethsemane because it was a battle for his will. Yeah. Not my will, but yours be done. Yeah. What was his will? Deny himself, his rights. Mm -hmm. He didn't empty his divinity. He said, I will not count it as anything to grab a hold of. I'm not going to rely on it. It's there, but I'm not going to rely on it. Mm. Instead, he chose a criminal's death, Philippians 2. Here's where the glory came. It was the death of his will, the death of his flesh, every desire, every dream, every hope, every single thing he wanted. Any attempt at being pleasing with people, not that he sought the pleasure of men, he didn't. But anything that was humanly possible to have been sought after had to die. Any hopes of a ministry, any hopes of a business, any hopes of good kids, any hope of any single thing here on this earth. Listen, this, this earth is, is, is a titanic. It's sinking. Stop. Stop hoping here. It ain't going to happen. You're not going to be pleasing to God with what you do. Who you are is pleasing to Him. He made you. He bought you. You're His. He did two works. He created you, and then He redeemed you. Boom! You're loved. Because He bought you with His own blood. Okay? There's no price greater than that. What does He say? I assure you, verily, verily, truly, truly, emet, emet, mamash, in, in Hebrew, seriously, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces a large crop. The one who loves his life will lose it. And the one who hates his life... Okay, he had to put this in. Otherwise, we foolish, boorish human people would say, Oh, I hate my life, therefore let me just kill myself. Okay, we won't do that. That's why he had to put it in there. Hates his life in this world. Will keep it for eternal life. He had to, he had, Jesus had to specify. Because he knew what was in the heart of man. That's what John says. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. Where I am, there my servant also will be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. I'm going to jump around here. Okay, the word I've... This is John 12, 48. Second part of it. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. Verse 50. Okay, 49. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father himself has, who sent me has given me a command as to what I should say and what I should speak. I know that his command is eternal life. Okay, let's go. Let me ask the question. Do you have life? Do you experience life? I, can, I can't tell you exactly, and this is eternal life, John 17, that you know God and, 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 and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That's eternal life. Okay? Eternal life is a spiritual language. It's like talking English to a Chinese man, or even better yet, trying to, trying to talk the language of gravity to a helium balloon. It, it, it just, you can't do it. You can only talk around it. How do you talk what wind is? You can't see it, you can't smell it. You can only describe around it. So it is with the spiritual. Okay? If you cannot understand the spiritual or receive the spiritual, let's face it, there's something 
preventing you from understanding the spiritual things of God. Because God is spirit, and those who would worship Him would worship Him in spirit and truth. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus has to do it. You can't do it yourself. Stop trying. Jesus, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. I receive it. It is only set aside in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3. If Moses is there, a veil is over your eyes. Sorry. Totally true. Any teaching, anything you read has got to come from Christ and Him crucified. That's got to be your center. And if it's not your center, something's wrong. If I, even I be lifted up, okay? John 15. And what Ravenhill said, we must die to live. John 15, verse 10. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love. So says, I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. And He said, my, His command is eternal life. Mm. Verse 11. I have spoken these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this that someone will lay down his life for his friends. Let's go to John 17, 24. He's praying. Father, I desire those you have given me to be with me where I am. Die, people. Die to yourself. Die to every effort you're stinking trying. Die. Let everything in you be on the altar and say, God, I'm sorry. I've tried to be acceptable. I've tried to do this Jesus thing. I can't do it. The law is meant as a mirror to show you you're, you're worthless in yourself. It is set aside in Jesus Christ. Jesus was the one who did it perfectly. You can't do it perfectly no matter how hard you try. Jesus is here. You're still not going to do it perfectly. You're, you are re-crucifying the Lord of glory. He died. He rose again. His purpose was so that you would do as he did. I want to be where you are. Jesus wants, wants us to be where he is. Where was he? In the grave. And now where is he? Ephesians 2. Go to Ephesians 2. You know, there's one thing that I, I, rem I remember <clears throat> is that realizing that he has not sinned even in his thoughts. So even in his thoughts, he has followed everything. Which yep. we can't even... Um, it's true. Go ahead, no. No, it's two prerequisites to keep the law perfectly in, phys in physicality and, and in heart. And in heart. How many times the disciples came up, oh, you faithless and twisted generation, how long must I bear with you? Yeah. How many times you get up, you get kids, I'm tired of you. You know what? You just committed sin. Yeah. Sorry. You had an outburst of anger. That's a work of the flesh. Yeah. You sinned, you deserve hell outside of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every inconvenience, every time you cover your greed, pride, <coughs> selfishness. The, the bad flesh is your pimp, prostitute, drug dealing, etc. Your good flesh is religion. Covering yourself up. And when you can't think straight, you're unkind, you're unwilling to give, even to the point where it hurts. You're on, you want to hold on to the things of this earth. You want your comfort. Mm. You know what? Tough. Jesus didn't have a potty break. Yeah. Going to the cross. He got laughed at. He had just about every... When they insult you, do you get upset? Love doesn't get offended. Do you get offended? Mm. Do, do you say, well, how dare that stinker pot? You know what? You just said, boom. Forget it. God's not going to let you get away with any of it. Go ahead and have perfect thought life. Go ahead and have a totally a life where you're like, I am never inconvenienced by people. Go ahead. Try it. 
Doesn't work. Doesn't work for five minutes. No. <laughs> Yesterday I had a yelling fit with the kids because. <coughs> Stick it, you're not obeying me. I, I sinned. How many fathers discipline in anger? Yeah. How many of you, you mothers thrown something because you were upset? Or just shut down and say, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm, I'm not even going to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to my bed, pull the covers over my head. How many of y'all have done that, moms? I'm not picking on you. I'm done. I'm going back to work. <laughs> That's why Jesus came, to set you free from that. You're set free. You are set free. This is his command. Do what he tells you. Well, how do you know what he's telling me? He's given us his word. You listen to him. You get in that quiet spot. You simply obey what he tells you. And only if you have the Holy Spirit baptizing you. Stop trying to figure it out. Just stop. The reason why you're dry is because you're seeking the face of God. The reason why you're dry is because you have nothing to go by. What do you do? Get alone in that closet. God's given you a word, you hang on to it. Jesus has set you free. Not into license, I'm not saying that. But if you feel dry, it's because you don't. You may not have life, or you are dying. You're being buried so that you may raise up. You're in a dormant spot, and you need life. You need Holy Spirit life. You need a baptism and an anointing, a fresh anointing. Because you're in the ground. You're like, God, get me out of here. Tough. You, that's why you're dry, because you're not submitted to it. That means your will is not crucified. You're tired of it. You want to get out. But it's, it, it is... It is God, Jesus wants us to be where we are. And it says, uh, oh, um, let's see, where we are seated in the heavenly places, Ephesians. Oh, Lord, I don't. Two, six. Two, six. Thank you. Together with Christ Jesus, he also raised us up and seated us in the heavens. He's seated in the heavens. His prayer is that we are where He is. Do you guys understand that your life is hidden with Christ and God? You're there. Your body is here on this earth as an extension of who He is up there and who you are up there. If that's the case, we need to be a different breed of people coming out of our closet every morning with joy and resurrection life. Jesus says, 11, 20, uh, uh, John 11, 24, I'm the resurrection. Your life is hidden with Christ and God. Galatians 2.20. Go to Galatians 2.20. For through the law I have died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Your life... If you're getting offended in this life, it's because you're holding on to the flesh. You're holding on to the old man. What does Romans say? That on the cross, the old man was crucified with its lust and desires thereof. The flesh was crucified. It's done. It is done. It is finished. To tell us die. It is finished. Stop trying to go back. That's why you're dry. And the way to cure dryness Recognize you are seen in the ground. You're being buried by the master, the master gardener. He puts you in the ground. He says, I give the growth. One sows, one waters, one reaps. I give the growth, he says. I cause you to grow. Be content to be buried. Be content to be raised again. Allow your will to die. Offer it up. Stop running around like a chicken without its head. Those of you who've raised and slaughtered chickens, you know what I'm talking about. Rest. 
I love the hymn from J. Hudson Taylor. Well, he, he didn't, it was his favorite hymn. While during the Boxer Rebellion, missionaries were being slaughtered left and right by the Chinese. And they would say, Dr. Taylor, he was, he was a medical doctor. Dr. Taylor, we lost this, this missionary and that missionary. That one got killed. That one got killed. He would turn, and the second work of grace that, that Red, Ravenhill was talking about, I experienced it. Helen Ewan, she was trans, transformed life, and I said, oh, Lord, I'm critical. I poke the finger. I think people are better than me, or uh, I'm better than people. And really, I don't deserve it. And I said, Jesus changed me. I'm not transformed. I'm experiencing no resurrection in my life. If you're in the ground and dry, it's because God wants to do resurrection in you. Let him submit. Just submit. J. Hudson Taylor would turn and say, This is I am resting, resting. In the joy of what thou art, I am finding out the greatness of thy loving heart. Thou hast bid me gaze upon thee, and thy beauty fills my soul. For by thy transforming power, thou hast made me whole. If you're dry, submit. Lay it out on the altar. Father in heaven, thank you for your word that speaks a better word. Thank you for your blood, Jesus, that speaks a better word. And that word is life. I pray for those here, and I pray for those who are not, that you would give life to these people. Bring wholeness in Jesus' name. Amen.